What's poppin' y'all? It's your boy Pee Wee the Plug. Welcome back to the channel for another NBA mock draft reaction. Today, we're gonna be reacting to a mock draft that's close and dear to my heart. Uh, this is NBADraft.net. The reason it's close to my heart, I grew up on this uh, from the start of my draft excitement or intrigue. Um, my dad introduced me to NBADraft.net. This was like years ago, like decade ago, uh, longer than almost 15 years ago. This is around a time where Derrick Rose and Michael Beasley were entering the draft. So this is this is a very long time ago. And since then, um, you know, growing up when I was getting into the draft and everything, scouting players and player comparisons, this was always my hub and my place to go to way before we had iPhones, iPads and all this access to all of this draft content. This is where I went. I drafted. I mean, I would go into the library, print out scouting reports, highlight the, the player comparisons and study it from this hub right here. So, uh, you know, hindsight now, all the draft information, a lot of people laugh at NBA draft that night because the comparisons can be all over the place and everything. But I remember in the early 2000s coming here um, to get my, my draft info on every prospect that was in the draft. I was seven, eight years old. Now, all of these years later, they're still here, still doing anything. And me and my dad talked about it about a week ago, how uh, this was the place for us to go. Uh, so this is, like I said, near and dear, but here we are. I'm reacting. Uh, first three picks. We already know it's always going to be these three guys in some order. I zoomed in as much as I could to kind of hide the next picks after the top three, uh, starting with the magic, the first overall pick Jabari Smith Jr. No surprise there. I've heard a lot of rumblings and rumors that they're set on him or Chet, which is surprising to me. I've said it a bunch of times. Paulo would be my number one pick just because I think he fa he fares as, um, a number one option and go-to guy. And I really think that's what the magic is missing. Uh, it may be hope within the front office or something that they see that makes them think he can develop into that because Jabari Smith is still extremely young. Um, but when I look at the roster up and down with all of the young talent that they have, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, man, with the progression and Jamal Mosley being the developmental coach that he is, if this guy, if this team got a number one uh, go-to guy scoring option, you look around the playoffs, that's what all the good teams have. The Jason Tatums, the Jimmy Butlers, the Giannis's, uh, the Lucas. Every team has that go-to guy. You should get one if you have the opportunity. But again, um, it's tough to go against any pick because all of these guys are talented. But when you see the number one option potential in Paolo, I would lean more to him than Jabari Smith Jr. I look at Jabari Smith Jr. as a guy that complements the main guy. Um, especially with the spot up ability, pick and pop, um, and the size, the mid range jump shot. I, I, I like er everything about Jabari Smith Jr. except the the self creation. So we'll see. Uh, number two, they have Chet going to the Thunder. Not mad at that when you look at the size of, the th of this Thunder team with Josh Giddy as a six eight point guard, Shea is six six, Darius Baisley is six eight six nine, Pokashevsky is like six eleven seven foot. Um, adding Chet to that really um gives you a chance to to better up that defense it's gonna be a tough 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 way to get there because it's still a young team and we haven't seen any defensive promise there um which is why the magic probably have some 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 interest in chet because they already had a very good defense uh the year prior with a young team so he comes in and probably makes them even better but uh I, it, to me it's all about the, the the connecting of the dots offensively for chet and how they want to play him. Is he going to be your four? Is he going to be your five? Is he going to be able to stretch the floor enough? Uh, is he going to play make? There's a lot of different questions. I know he can do these things and he has shown flashes, but at what level and what rate is he going to do it for the team that he goes to? Um, and, and, and I think that's going to play a big part, but I can see him fitting into Oklahoma City a lot. I just don't think the defense may pop instantly like it would with some other different teams because there are a lot of question marks that would be around Chet on a perimeter, you would have to have Shea buy in to being back to the the defender he was his rookie year. Now he's a scorer, which is which is tough. <laughs> um, you know, Josh Giddy, lateral quickness, who he can keep up and, and stay in front of on a perimeter is always going to be a question mark. Uh, but Lou Dort is there, so they have some things and they have some pieces. I, I could see Chet really fitting in OKC. I would personally like Jabari Smith Jr. there at, at OKC with the number two because I think he can really complement Shea and Josh Giddy. Um, as a floor spacer and another offensive weapon to open up the floor for Shea to really do his thing because we've seen the success he's had attacking the basket and making defenses collapse. Paolo at three. Um, I was major concerned with Paolo at three since I found out they had the third overall pick just because of the lack of playmaking there. 
Um, but hopefully the addition of Paolo, if he were to go to Houston, could open up the playmaking opportunities for Jalen Green. I think that's the next step for him, playing off the ball a little bit more, being comfortable spotting up for three, and then also being able to create for others. That'll open up his offensive package and arsenal to the to, to the highest level. We're seeing it with a guy like Jason Tatum turn that page and turn that leaf. This playoff run he's had, even specifically against the Miami Heat, letting the defense um, give him whatever. Whatever the defense gives is what I'm going to take. And we've seen him beat teams with the pads, him making his teammates weapons, uh, which keeps the defense on their toes and it makes it less predictable uh, to go against and for, for them to know what he's going to do. But if the, the he gave him threes, he took threes. If they gave him the mid, he took the mid. If he had a room to attack, he attacked. Uh, if the open man, if the kick was there, he kicked it. He swung it, made his teammates, um, you know, weapons, and it made the defense have to respect them, which opened up the floor for him to have efficient uh, scoring games and, 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 and be able to be a lot more lethal. And I think that's the next step for a guy like Jalen Green as he develops uh, with the Houston Rockets. And hopefully the addition of Apollo could do that. Now, after the top three, which, again, we know it's going to be some order. These three guys, they're getting all the attention. And number four, the Sacramento Kings is taking Jaden Ivey. They have Jaden Ivey going here. This is always going to be a question during the draft just because of what the Kings did with Tyrese Halliburton, trading him to the Pacers because of the fit in the backcourt with De'Aaron Fox. And De'Aaron Fox is not lethal or effective off the ball. Um, so how do you put someone in the backcourt with them? They have to be off the ball to have success. They would have to believe in Jaden Ivey's off ball um off ball effectiveness to to really buy into this and you have to be able to think that Jaden Ivey can reach his fullest potential in a backcourt De'Aaron Fox vice versa and I think that's what's really putting a key a, a, a wrench in the Kings development and rebuild De'Aaron Fox is a good player don't get me wrong but his lack of effectiveness without the basketball and the fact that he's not necessarily elite with the basketball it kind of is is, is 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 weird. So I know there's rumors that they were traded for an established player. Please don't do that, Kings. Do not sacrifice your future for a player that can come in and help you for two years. And then the next thing you know, you're back rebuilding. That's not the way to go. But I definitely think they may have to have some options. You're looking at Jaden Ivey. You're looking at Shane Sharp. And, and, and again, Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray isn't the sexiest name when it comes to upside like these two other guys. Jaden Ivey is the most explosive guy in the draft. Second to none when it comes to that. Shane Sharp, the mystery man, but has all the tools and measurements that look sexy and attractive to, to put on a perimeter. And, and he could probably develop it to a two-way in the right situation. But Keegan Murray is a guy who could play the four. You could put next to Sabonis offensively. He's going to be uh, super effective, smart, can cut, play without the basketball, play with the basketball in different moments. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a very intriguing way to put him in to make a, a, a offense a lot more um, flowing. He could, he could be he could he could be somebody that can unlock a lot of things for the Kings. But at four, there's going to be a pressure to try to draft the next star. And I don't think they're going to want to pass on Jaden Ivey. But if you get him, you have to be sold on him and Fox or move on from Fox. And if that was the case, you, you should have traded him instead of Tyrese Halliburton. So the Kings find themselves in a super, super tough decision. Ultimately, I wouldn't be mad if they took Jaden Ivey, best player available, most upside. Uh, they really need something to jolt that fan base and to get some excitement going in that building. Um, number five, the Detroit Pistons. They're taking Keegan Murray. Um, I like this pick for them. More size. Uh, another guy who can play without the basketball and play off of Kay Cunningham and make Kay Cunningham a lot more lethal. You have Sadiq Bey who can spot up and play without the basketball and guard and defend. Um, you have Isaiah Stewart there. You already have Jeremy Grant. This allows you to really make him available on the market to get back any type of uh, assets or young players and young talent. Um, Keegan Murray, though. Like everything I said about him with the Kings, I think mesh with the with the with the Pistons. And um the thing though is seeing OG Ananobi come from a Dwayne Casey Toronto Raptor team, it would make me interested to see if the Detroit Pistons have any interest in Shaden Sharp. Because Shaden Sharp, when I look at his size and I look at his game and some of his tools, I could see him being in the mold of an OG Ananobi. So I wonder if the Detroit Pistons are super intrigued and if they're working him out and what they think um, of Shaden Sharp. But I would not be mad at Keegan Murray at all. I think he's not the sexiest name because you have all of these guys with that potential and upside words around their name. But Keegan Murray is a guy that I think comes in and helps you 
a lot more than people are going to give him credit for because of the lack of upside and his age, which is mind blowing to me. Um, and number six, they have the Pacers taking Benedict Matherin. I think Benedict Matherin um, and, and Tyrese Halliburton in the backcourt is, 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 is very, very intriguing. Or even if you put Benedict Matherin at the three, just because Tyrese Halliburton, his ability to play make out of the pick and roll, decision making, his shot making, and then you pair that with Benedict Matherin's defense, his size, two six five six six guys in the backcourt they can defend multiple positions they can switch off of guys very interchangeable and then you take it to the offensive end where benedict matherin can play off of tyrese halliburton he won't need the basketball as much he can jump up and get alley-oops he's athletic that pair tyrese halliburton throwing them lobs on a break this could be a really 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 fun duo you pair that with uh miles turner in the front court if they do decide to keep him you also have Chris Dorte. This could be a very fun team. And offensively, I think they would be a very good duo that can mesh together. I, th I think that's like a, a seamless fit of Benedict being super lethal off the ball. Tyrese Halliburton showing his upside with the ball. And if Benedict Matherin takes any steps with um, his on ball creation, Tyrese Halliburton can play off the ball and you can allow them to be interchangeable there. So I, I like this pick a lot. I like this pick um, a, a very much. Benedict Matherin, I think, is is legit. And the, the ability to play off the ball makes him super intriguing with his six six size, his athletic ability, and the, the two-way upside that he does bring. So I'm I'm a hundred percent sold um on Benedict Matherin to the Pacers. A little bit of Victor Oladipo in, in his game. Number seven, Johnny Davis. I don't I, I'm not gonna say I'm mad at this pick. I'm not gonna say I'm mad at this pick, but Damian Lillard. And Anthony Simons, that has to be somewhat of the backcourt. I think there's better options for Portland at seven. Maybe you take Shade Sharp. If I'm if if I'm the the Portland Trailblazers, I'm wishing that Benedict Matherin can fall to me at seven. Um, hell, even Dyson Daniels with his six seven six eight size. Um, Jalen Duran possibly with 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 uh, use of Nurkic being you know on the open market. But then again, they may take a run at DeAndre Aiden potentially, so I don't know. But I definitely don't know how I feel. Jeremy Sohan, I, I, feel, I know it seems early at 7, maybe you trade back or something. But I think there's better options for Portland because Johnny Davis, you want him to be able to come to a team where he's going to be able to have shot attempts and be able to really try to be the offensive player that he was at Wisconsin. And going into Portland, I don't know if that's going to be the case because Anthony Simons is going to have a, a large uh, diet of the shot. Same with Damian Lillard. How do you put Johnny Davis in the mix with those two to allow him to reach his fullest potential? I don't think that this is a good one. I'm, I'm against taking Johnny Davis at seven if I'm Portland. Uh, I'd rather trade the pick before I do that because there, there's just better options. I would look to try to trade it for Jeremy Grant or some, something with Detroit. It's better options out there for Portland. But I don't like that trio of Johnny Davis, Anthony Simons, and uh, Damian Lillard. Even with Johnny Davis's defensive upside. Just not that much of a fan of it. AJ Griffin for 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 the Pelicans would probably be a better option. Um, to be honest, his off ball ability, uh, you know, to to shoot the three at a high percentage, he would probably be a better option there. But at New Orleans, I like it. You just get as many wings as you can that can play without the basketball, have some physical tools. You're definitely going to need AJ Griffin to fix things up on the defensive side of the basketball. He he did not do as well as I projected him to do coming into college. But again, you have Trey Murphy, you have Herb Jones, you add in A.J. Griffin. I think you really have a hub of wings that can come in an effective game defensively and offensively to play without the basketball with C.J. Brandon Ingram and Zion. That's going to be super, super key for the Pelicans going forward. So I like this pick a lot. Um, and nine, they have the San Antonio Spurs taking Shaden Sharp. I don't see the Spurs taking a mystery man. I know last year they took Josh Primo, but Josh Primo wasn't a mystery man. He was just a bit of a, a earlier pick and an earlier reach. Um, but Shaden Sharp is a true mystery man. 6'5", they have him listed as a shooting guard. I think that's where the Spurs have that log jam at. I would take Jalen Duran. Uh, Jalen Duran, Jacopoto, you can let him come in. They can play uh, behind one another. You can make Jacopoto expandable. I've been seeing his name in trade rumors. But DeJounte, Lonnie Walker... Um, Josh Primo, Kelton Johnson, Devin Vassell. They have a lot of wings and guards that are interchangeable there. That's why they traded Derek White. Adding another one to the mix. Don't know how much that intrigues me. 
I would even look at Jeremy Shohan. They have that that hole at the four. Trey Lyles they've had. Doug McDermott they've put there. They they need to really go out there and figure out who's going to be their four. Keldon Johnson is playing small ball four. Um, I would look at Jalen Durand or Jeremy Sohan with the ninth overall pick. Even Dyson Daniels. At least he's 6'8", and you can put him all over the place, and he can play with so many different guys on the perimeter. But Shaden Sharp, I, I don't think that that's a spur pick at all. Uh, number 10, the Washington Wizards, they have them taking him. Wow, Ochai Abaje. That's a little that's a little early for me. That's a little early for me. Um, again, I think there will be better options there. Uh, Jerry, Jeremy Sohan, Dyson Daniels, the point guard position is really vacant out there. I think he could really coexist with Bradley Beal, Kuzma, Rui Hachimura, Danny Avahia, Daniel Gafford, Thomas Bryant, Chris Dasperzingas. Uh, Dyson Daniels is the way to go. I don't even have anything to say. If you're Washington and Dyson Daniels is still on the board and you're taking Ochai Abaje, somebody has to get fired and lose their job. Dyson Daniels would be the number one guy on my draft board if I'm Washington with the 10th overall pick. I'm going to just leave it at that. 11 is my New York Knicks. They have us taking Ty Ty Washington. I feel like this is bland. Like This is just this is kind of casual and lazy. The Ty Ty Washington to the, to the Knicks has been like three months, four months we've been hearing it. There's just too many good options on the board right now. Even even here, there's still nobody taking Dyson Daniels. And we you're telling me we pass on Dyson Daniels for Ty Ty. I'm scrolling past that. We don't we we we're not liking that. Uh 12. Tari Eason. I like Tari Eason, but I feel the same way with Johnny. I, I, I keep saying Johnny Davis. I feel the same way with Dyson Daniels. If you're 12 and you're taking Tari Eason and you still have Jeremy Sohan on the board, I gotta say that you're, you're tripping. I like Tari Eason, but Jeremy Sohan, Dyson Daniels. One, the Thunder would have to take one of those two. They would have to. There's just too much upside there. Even if, even with Uzman Jiang, I, I would take him over Tari East. And it's the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're looking for upside guys. And as much as I like Tari East and he has upside himself, I think there's better options. And I think that might be a theme. So 13, Jalen Duran falls all the way to the Hornets. This would be a steal and, and like the, the, the get of the draft for the Charlotte Hornets. If there was a world where Jalen Duran could fall 13, I don't see it happening. A lot of other mock drafts have Mark Williams going there. But if you can get Jalen Duran, that would be an absolute get. You put him in a front court. He's physical, athletic. I think he can run with LaMelo. That would be an exciting pickup for them. Um, and I like that one. I like this pick better than the previous three or four with Sharp, Abaje, Washington, and Tari Eason going to teams that I just don't think would prioritize them over some of the other available guys. At 14, we have the Cavs taking Malachi Branham. I like this pick a lot. They need somebody who can uh, be effective off the ball and, and mesh with Darius Garland in the backcourt while still trying to give some effort defensively. The only thing I would say is the size and the fact that he kind of plays like Karis LeVert already, who you have on roster. Uh, I think in a perfect world, the Cavs are able to get somebody like Ochai Abaje, who can be ready to play from day one, has size, and is super, super effective without the basketball and can defend. That's very, very simple um, and comes in. But I, I'm, I'm not mad at Malachi Branham, especially if Colin Sexton isn't going to return. There's some good upside there with him. 15, we have uh, the Hornets back on the clock. Nikola Jovic is a very good pick. After landing Jalen Duran, you get your big man. Now you go out and you take a chance and a swing at a guy who has an offensive profile that looks very, very good. He has some size at 6'10", 6'11". He can play shooting guard, small forward, maybe even power forward. Um, and I like his shooting and athleticism with that young gunning team. The only thing is, it's going to be very, very tough for him to get minutes with Gordon Hayward, uh, Miles Bridges if he returns. You're going to have to find a way to make sure that he's able to get a chance to reach his fullest potential. But that would be a good security blanket if Miles Bridges were to leave and go elsewhere in free agency. 16, the Hawks take Mark Williams. They don't like this pick at all. They already have Clint Capella and uh, a Congo. So this pick, I'm not really feeling. 17, you have the Houston Rockets taking Jeremy Sohan. I'm not mad at that, but if you're taking Paolo with the third pick, it's a lot of front court players. Usman, Usman Garuba, uh, Kenya Martin Jr., Paolo Bancaro, not Jeremy Sohan. Getting a little redundant out there in Houston, especially with the need of guard play. I would look elsewhere at 17. Uh, Blake Wesley. Chicago would probably wish that they could get Jeremy Sohan. Blake Wesley, I'm not mad at, especially depending on what happens with with uh, with uh, Zach Levine. But they need they have a lot of other question marks that I think that they would prioritize um, than the guard position. This may be a BPA best player available move. 
But I think there's other routes and directions the Bulls can go because with Kobe White, uh, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, uh, Io, where is Baker Wesley really getting the minutes? Even if Zach Levine, with Zach Levine returning, where do you play him? How does he really get vital minutes? It's tough because you're not playing him at the three. So again, a lot. Uh, Dyson Daniels falls all the way 19. We're going to close this out. We're going to close this out. We, we, I'm, I'm going to get to closing this out, but I got to look around some of these picks. Like, Dyson Daniels falling 19 is just not it, man. It's not it. I'm sorry. I, I have to look around. Kendall Brown, 21 to the Denver Nuggets. I'm not mad at that. Marjan Bochamp. But if you take Shaden Sharp, why are you taking him? You, that's like your seventh wing player. Memphis, that's a high grab for Max Christie, but I like it. Can play off the ball. Um, Jaden Hardy is extremely low. Going to Brooklyn. They're doing that again. They took Cam Thomas last year to take a Jaden Hardy now. Jalen Williams has to go a lot higher. I mean, when you look at the Bulls, you look at Houston, you look at Atlanta, even Charlotte there at 15, Jalen Williams being right there, that's too, too low. Uzman Jang, I like him with the Spurs, but at 25, not 24 teams aren't passing on him with the upside he has. They're they're just not. Walker Kessler to Miami. (sighs) Caleb Houston to, to... yeah, this, NBADraft.net, I love you. You're near and dear to my heart. But Dyson Daniels at 19, I, 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 I can't get with, man. I can't get with. Um, This is an okay mock draft. I'm giving this one like a D minus or a C plus. Somewhere between that two. I think they have, I got to see, when was this last done? This was updated on May 24th, not that long ago. I'm going to need another update, man. I'm going to need another update. My mock draft is coming soon for those of y'all that are waiting. I got a lot of draft content that I'm working on, and I'm gathering to get ready for y'all. This was cool. Shout out to NBADraft.net. A lot of curveballs throwing at me right there to close the video. Big head scratchers. Um, I'll see y'all next time with the next mock draft reaction. I'm Pee Wee The Plug. This is NBA Weekly. I'm out. Peace.